All right, today we're going to be talking about designing GraphQL schemas. We're going to talk about design considerations, different approaches. We will code up a schema and go over it and discuss it and get prepared to do resolvers on the schema. All right, so let's get to it. What's that smell? All right, I used the repo from a previous video as a template. And so let's go ahead and clone it. All right, and we'll load the packages. And we'll run the tests. Everything's looking good. All right, let's do it. All right, so let's open up our main schema file and make some edits here. As you can see, I'm using a light theme. And if you watch some previous videos, you can see why I've gone back to light theme after a few years with dark theme. And so let me show you that just in case you're interested. So I'm using paper color. I think that looks the best of all the light themes, you know, for me. And I've had to adjust it a bit. I have it working with airline. I had to adjust light line for working with AL and the gutter. It's a little weird there. And did a few overrides in the options here. Same with my iTerm colors. Had to tinker a little bit to get it the way I wanted, uh, but it all came together really nicely. And all of that is here in my dot files under public dots, vim, nvim. And then if you look in init or vimrc, you can see the paper color stuff. And then if you go ahead and go back out to the iTerm folder, you can look at the customized version of the paper color theme. And that brought it all together for me. All right, now we're off that tangent and can get back to work. Let's use the increasingly useful GitHub CLI to check out the issue that's been assigned to us. All right. And so we will use my little zish function here to pull it up and take a look. And so we need to be able to query for an individual team by ID. And uh, these are the fields that we need. All right. Great. Let's get started with this. All right. Let me take you on another quick detour and take a look at the Ghive zish function that I wrote. It just wraps the GitHub CLI function for viewing an issue. It stands for GitHub issue view because not only do I want to open it in Vim, but I want it formatted in Markdown from standard in. So that's all this is. And I have a gist for it up on GitHub. All right, let's talk about a couple different approaches to scheme and design. Now, straight from the Apollo docs is query driven schema design. And that's when you want to design your schema based on how data is going to be used, not based on how it's stored. The truth is that GraphQL was invented to serve front end clients. It's important that your schema makes sense to your front end developers. You know, like with any software you write, you want to design the interface as if you were going to be the client of your own code. And then there's domain driven GraphQL schema design. It's important to note that GraphQL is self documenting. So domain driven design, it helps make sure that the documentation represents your business domain. And it's important that you design your schema, you know, alongside a domain expert or that you are a domain expert. And alongside doesn't need to be taken literally. If the requirements you receive were written by a domain expert, then that works too. A GraphQL schema can get away from you quite quickly. So thinking about your domain and your graph clients 
can help keep your schema on track. When using GraphQL, a server expresses the complete set of possibilities that it can fill via the type system. And that allows clients to precisely express their data needs in terms of a specific query based on those types, a data shape in one single request. This separation of concerns, it allows for a single server to support a wide array of clients with really different needs because the server actually knows less about the clients. And more importantly, it supports the continual evolution of those clients over time. So when a client developer changes how their app works, they often don't need to touch a server at all. All right, do you want to schematize all the things? No. If you have an object where the clients will always want all the fields, then just return the JSON. You know, this allows that object to change and you as a backend developer and GraphQL badass don't need to worry about it. Remember, GraphQL is meant to serve the front end clients. Making front end developers type out a huge select list is not only unnecessary, but also a great way for introducing bugs on the UI. Look, the whole point behind GraphQL is allowing clients to only query for the fields they need. Yeah, sure, on the back end, you know, we're still fetching the whole set, but the clients can take a subset and at least that response will be smaller. Now, as a back end API developer, you may think that GraphQL is just extra work for you. You know, there's no benefit for you. Well, first of all, the role of a backend developer is to serve front end clients. You know, the front end or UI is what the user sees. It's what they use. And that's how we all get paid. Also, a robust GraphQL API allows front end devs to query however they want with filters, paging, etc. You know, this saves you from having to add new branching to your code to handle random requests from the UI. You know, you expose your business model with business rules through schema and let GraphQL and the UI developers go crazy with it. You know, generally speaking, not a lot of business logic belongs in UI code. UI should be focused on giving the customer a great experience. We could get into what belongs on the back end and what belongs on the front end, and that's always a fun debate. But if it has to do with business rules, then the answer is most likely the back end. In many cases, if it's business rules, it's possibly even more upstream, like in a stored procedure. Now, whether business logic belongs in the database or in the API is another debate. My opinion is that the database should provide fairly raw data and the business logic layer can wrangle the data, apply business rules, and provide an API for clients. The reality is that companies have processes, priorities, politics, and they are what they are. But if you're sitting at a startup right now, do yourself a favor and separate the concerns now. For established companies, some of these processes are entrenched and it isn't easy to change them, so you adapt. That's half the job. You know, it's no fun if it's greenfield all the time. All right, let's look at the project structure. All right, we have a lot of config, our schema folder and tests. And so go ahead and run the project. Looking good. All right, what do we need here for the schema? All right, we need a team, of course. All right, full team name. Good 
menu. Division, all right, these will be types. League, if I can spell. All right, now let's build these types out. All right, and they all have ID and name. Copy pasta. All right, and then you're going to want league. Great. And what else? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's give it a shot here. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Yeah, that would help. Die. Alrighty. And we'll return a team. Let's try this again. Now let's plug in a select list. Great. Default resolver gives us null, which is what we expect because we need to do custom resolvers. And the tests look good. All right. Fantastic. All right. Check the status. Hey, look at that. I've been on master the whole time. I do that all the time. Create a feature branch. All right. Now we're good. Check this in. Great. And push it. Okay. All right. Now, let's take a look at the issues. All right, now the next issue will be to actually resolve these fields. Let's take a look at the data source. Okay, so we know we're going to have to extend this to the teams. And these are the same fields course we're familiar with all right let's put in our PR all 
Mm-hmm. Looking good. Uh -huh. Let's squash this. All right, merged. All right, let's get set up for the next one. Test looking good. Kill our branch. All right. All right, we need to close the issue. Let's see, let's see, close. No, no, no. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to do it the old fashioned way. Lock this now. And we'll just edit this. Oops. All right, cool. All right, I thought that GitHub CLI did this. So let me see. What am I missing here? No, no, there's close. Okay. Well, ah, uh, haha, yeah. All right, well, next time we're going to go ahead and build the resolvers and update the data source so that we can resolve and that should be fun. So look out for that. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you would be so kind as to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, I'd really appreciate it. Have a great day.